Today what I would talk about um, is my recent trip to uh, Nepal, to the refugee camps in the eastern Terai there. Um, give a bit of background about the Loshampa population that has been there in those camps for about 18 years now. Talk a little bit about the United States and Canadian uh, resettlement program policies and then get in just a bit to some of my area of research which is what we can do to prioritize these populations and come up with a more durable solution for the populations so they can integrate into a community and go on to become productive members of society. I've uh, incorporated some photographs I took during my recent trip into the presentation kind of to spice it up just a little bit uh, because uh, I, want the, I want to have two parallel streams of discussion and do feel free to ask questions as I present. One uh, stream of discussion where we kind of talk specifically about the Bhutanese situation and then another where we talk about reforming the current immigration um, refugee resettlement program. So I took this picture. I wanted to give you some background on it. Um, I was walking through the temporary holding facility in Kathmandu where the refugees are brought to before they leave on flights for the United States for Canada. This woman, regardless of how she seems here, was incredibly good spirits at the time. Um, she came up to me, she pulled me over, um, and she said, please, please, I want you to come take my picture, but you have to wait. She went inside her house, she changed into her dress, she put on her jewelry, she was very excited. She then proceeded to walk by, behind the only grate that was present, stand there, put her hands on the grate, and then stop smiling. <laughs> and she's like, take my picture. I'm like, oh God, I feel like I'm exploiting people, okay. So, um, but it, in a way, it actually does capture um, the importance of this issue. These are people, these are a population who really have been imprisoned, for lack of a better word, um, and are now being resettled into the United States and Canada uh, in hopes of a better life. All right, so just a few basics about uh, the situation in Bhutan. For those of you who don't know, Bhutan is an independent Buddhist kingdom situated in the Himalaya Mountains between Northeast India and Tibet. Uh, the population of the kingdom is estimated at about 600,000 people. And that's important to keep in mind because that has definitely played into some of the um, geopolitical wranglings that came about when we were trying to find a solution for this population in the camp. The Loshampa people um, are the people of southern, the southern border, which means that southern border in Bhutan. They inhabited mostly the foothills, which is an incredibly uh, ecologically diverse and rich area. Um, they engaged in agricultural pursuits for their entire existence there. Ethnically, they were, or are Nepali rather, um, migrated to that part of Bhutan about, I think it's about 100 uh, plus years ago now, and settled there, stayed there. That part of the world, uh, geographic boundaries or um, nationalistic boundaries aren't quite as easy to um, identify. And so people kind of moved freely between southern Bhutan, Nepal, and that northern part of India there. <laughs> and again, international borders between Nepal, Bhutan, and India were finalized in 1816. So the, the border has been there for quite some time. A little bit about the political developments that led up to the Loshampa leaving or being forcibly removed from Bhutan. In 1958, the Loshampa populations of Bhutan were granted Bhutanese citizenship. So this was the opportunity um, that they had to become full-fledged citizens and enjoy all the rights and privileges of the Bhutanese population. Again, keep in mind Bhutan is primarily a Buddhist kingdom um, and the Nepali Loshampa are primarily Hindu. So, the royal government allowed southern Bhutan to run its own affairs. So there was a degree of autonomy there. Um, again, they were an agricultural-based society and beginning and began to become profitable. Their crops became, um, it became an incredibly lucrative industry for them and they started establishing their own governments and governmental representatives and really kind of building on this um, legal autonomy that they were given. Then things started to change in 1985. In 1985, the Citizenship Act came about. And what the Citizenship Act did, uh, and keep in mind Bhutan is, uh, is ruled by a king. So the king signs the Citizenship Act. It forces everyone to speak 
Junka, which is the native language of Bhutan, which the people who are ancestrally from Nepal can't speak. They speak Nepali. It requires everyone in the country to wear the official dress of Bhutan, the Baku, which the Nepalis, the Loshampa, do not wear. It also says you can only derive, regardless of past laws, you can only derive citizenship if both of your parents are Bhutanese. And in this area, we have a lot of intermarriage between many of the Indian folk in the north, the Nepali people, and the Bhutanese people. So now you've disenfranchised a significant population of that southern Lhoshampa um, grouping because both of their parents are not necessarily Bhutanese. Then in 1988, a census was taken to guard against illegal immigration. This actually was, was a government effort to identify people who were not considered traditionally Bhutanese, so to identify the Loshampa and to label them as Loshampa as such. And then in 1987, the King of Bhutan brought about the five-year plan, one nation, one people, dress code, etiquette, we are all uniform. We are not a society that is based on diversity. We are a Buddhist society that believes um, in the Bhutan heritage and culture, not the diversity of other cultures brought in from other countries. So, growth of dissent. In 1989, the Loshampas brought complaints against the royal advisors to the king. Those, those advisors that the Loshampa elected were then imprisoned by the king. Not a good result for diplomatic relations. Bhutan published what I um, kind of uh, compare to the U.S. pamphlet Common Sense, written by Thomas Paine. Uh, it was called Bhutan, We Want Justice. And it was deliberated, uh, delivered rather to all the inhabitants of Bhutan, and it was a, a, a litany of their grievances, what the king had done um, to persecute them and the type of remedy that they wanted. Starting in the early 1990s, serious unrest began to spread across the country. You have several instances um, at this point where the king's ministers, or not ministers, but the king's representatives are going into the southern part of Bhutan. The local people um, are rebelling. There were some murders. There were two instances of the king's representatives being beheaded, their heads being put on stakes and walked around town. Um, so things are getting pretty hostile at this point. It was then that the royal government began accepting signatures for voluntary immigration. Um, what these signatures did, well, what the document did that the people were signing, was give all the land that the Loshampa had to the king. And it said, I freely renounce all claim to my land, to my property, and citizenship of Bhutan. I am Nepali, and I will leave. The king of Bhutan points to that and says, well, this is a clear example of the fact that they've left. I have a legal document attesting to the fact that they have chosen to leave of their own free will. They have not been forcibly removed. Um, the Nepali people in the South obviously disagree and felt that they had to sign that document under a state of duress. Now, the result of this voluntary immigration, the result of this forcible removal, regardless of how you want to look at it, was one-sixth of the population <clears throat> leaving Bhutan. One-sixth of the population, a massive amount. And that poses political problems for the possibility of resettlement in, uh, in Bhutan or repatriation of these populations back into Bhutan, because now that class of people represents a threat to the ruling elites in Bhutan. So an attempt to find a political solution, several uh, measures were taken. And when I say political solution, I mean a solution between the governments of Nepal and the governments of Bhutan to find a resolution um, that is happy uh, for both countries and has a positive effect on these populations. So in 1993, um, there was a joint committee to establish the fate of the Lashampas. Uh, and established them as bona fide refugees um, who immigrated by choice. There were 10 rounds of talks, no result, multiple changes in government. And that's an important factor to also keep in mind, is that Nepal used to be the kingdom of Nepal, and then it became a republic, and governments have switched hands many times. During my time there, I was staying in the capital, in the hotel where I was staying, the ruling Maoist party, or not ruling, but the Maoist party was there, along with the Democratic Party.